KTIV celebrating 70 years serving Siouxland. The following program is a special presentation of KTIV News 4. Hello, I'm KTIV's Vice President and General Manager Bridget Breen. We are so proud to bring you a special look at KTIV's first seven decades serving Siouxland. I want to take this time to thank you, our viewers and advertisers, who watch us and trust us every day to bring you the news, sports, weather, and entertainment that you want and need every day. Without you, KTIV would not be Siouxland's news source. I am from Siouxland and remember growing up and watching KTIV in our home. Siouxland is a special place, and KTIV has a rich history and legacy. It's been a privilege for all of us who have worked here to be a part of that. Again, thank you, and now enjoy a look at KTIV's first 70 years. Thanks for joining us as we take a look back on the past 70 years of KTIV television. I'm Matt Breen. And I'm Jessica Bowman. KTIV signed on the air on October 10th, 1954. It all began in Sioux City at 10th Street and Grandview Boulevard. Then in the 1970s, KTIV would move to our current home right here on Signal Hill. Our transmitter has also had several different locations as it's moved through the years, all to bring a better signal to Siouxland. First moving to a 2,000-foot tower near Hinton in the 1960s, then moving again a short distance away to a brand new state-of-the-art digital broadcast signal in the 2000s. That's right, and there have been so many personalities that have appeared on KTIV over the years. One of those is KTIV's Al Jones. He has been here for more than half of KTIV's 70 years, and he starts us off with a look at KTIV's very beginning. The ball got rolling in December 1953 when William Perkins and Dietrich Dirks jointly applied for a license for KTIV. Perkins was publisher of the Sioux City Journal and its sister radio station, KSCJ. Dirks was president of KCOM Radio, which later became KMNS. The application was approved the following month, and 10 months after that, in October of 1954, KTIV went on the air from its basement studio at 10th and Grandview. At that time, no one really knew exactly what you need to go on with television. The man who shouldered the responsibility for building KTIV was the station's first chief engineer, the late Al Smith. He recounted the origins of Channel 4 in this interview, done after KTIV moved to its current Signal Hill location in 1976. Uh, some of the larger cities had quite elaborate setups, and they been in the business for a while, but out here, uh, RCA come up with a package that will get you on the air, and they called the basic buy, and that's what that's what we used at our studio setup. They figured out what we should have, and pretty much gave us a wiring diagram and everything. He says, put this stuff together, and you got a television station. Two black and white studio cameras, a videocon film camera, slide projector, and a four-track audio mixer. The staff, well, uh, the, some of the people, came, uh, some of the people came over from from KCOM and same came over from KSCJ. Uh, I would say we probably had, uh, had uh, six or seven engineers and uh, I would say 25 or 30 people, something or another to start with. They had hoped to be on the air in time to carry the 1954 World Series, but they hit a snag. The microwave path between the downtown studio and the transmitter out in the country was blocked. And it seemed like there was a tree about a mile or two away from the studio, which was uh, very greatly attenuating or reducing our signal. Add another 25, 20 foot tower in order to get over that tree. And with that done, KTIV was on the air. In 1954, KTIV was on the air for six and a half hours each day. The first year, the station broadcast with 50,000 watts of power. That then was increased to 100,000 watts the following year after it became clear the Channel 4 signal wouldn't interfere with stations in Des Moines, Sioux Falls, or Omaha. And another familiar face to KTIV viewers is Larry Wentz. He also goes back into the archives with one of KTIV's earliest employees, on what it took to get on the air. This was the early home of KTIV. 
in the basement of 221 10th Street, not far from Hewlett High School. This is staff announcer and newscaster Vic Ferris standing outside of what was originally the Welch Hotel in the 1800s, then a former apartment building. The delightful thing of working in the basement of an old tenement building is to be shared by anybody. I mean, um, um, offices were in closets, offices were in sleeping rooms. It was, it was an incredible thing. George Limblay grew up nearby, landing a job as a teenager after providing the station with photos of a wrecked fire truck. No one told us we didn't have enough space to do live wrestling, which we did in there. We did uh, a, a cooking show. Leo Greco and his Kent Feed Band would uh, come in one night a week, uh, usually, and they would have a square dance in there. KTIV had many firsts, including the first color cameras in Sioux City, but there were bumps and bruises getting them on the air. Now, the first color cameras are about the size of a Volkswagen, and they had a ramp going down into that other building, and the cable went in front of the wheels, and they flipped over and broke it. Still photos were the first real visuals for a station that was just radio with a picture. Film cameras that provide visuals were a giant step forward. Then years later, a machine that used two-inch wide videotape came into use. And it was huge. I mean, it was, it was bigger than three domestic refrigerators. And getting it slid up four steps proved to be a challenge. So they're all holding it. And somebody said, we need a two before to wedge something. Unfortunately, everybody let go of the plank at once, and they went backwards down those stairs and landed right in the kitchen set and exploded. Limblade says the challenges of putting live TV on the air and the pitfalls made for an exciting time. That's what made TV fun in those days. Nobody was critical, and, and anything that happened was a new experience, and so we had nothing to compare it to. Still to come as we celebrate KTIV's 70th anniversary, a look back at how weather forecasting has changed over the years. Plus, we take a look at the technology it takes to bring you news and entertainment 24 hours a day and how that's changed over the last seven decades. Hi, I'm Dave Nixon, Jr. Great to be back here at KTIV Channel 4 News. I had the pleasure of actually being here twice, starting back in the late 70s and then coming back in the early 90s. A wonderful place to be. My early days here at Channel 4 go all the way back to the late 1970s, and when it comes to the memories, it's all about the people that I had the opportunity to work with. The people like Jane Sewell, remember her? Terry Zahn, uh, of course, Kathy Egan, Mike Wonkum. Uh, there's just so many great people that we just had such fun with over so many years. Uh, and of course, I was blessed to work with Dad. That was uh, that was something. That was pretty rare. Happy anniversary, KTIV! Here's to 70 years of serving Siouxland, and many more to come. Hi, I'm Kathy Egan, and I worked at KTIV from 1987. To 2009. While at KTIV, I served as a reporter, a news anchor, and as the weather lady and host of Around Siouxland. The one thing that I will never forget about KTIV is the crash of Flight 232, reporting from the ground, keeping people informed of that tragic event. A funny event I remember was skiing down Signal Hill during a big snowstorm. I grabbed my skis and zoom, down the hill I went. Happy anniversary, KTIV. Here's to the first 70 years of serving Siouxland and many more to come. You know the old saying in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute and it'll change. Since the beginning, KTIV has been the go-to station in Sioux City when it comes to weather coverage. Whether it was severe weather or just planning for your weekend at the lake, people have trusted KTIV for 70 years to bring them accurate forecasts 
and life-saving information when they need it. And you know, that hasn't always been easy, <laughs> but as the years have gone by, technology, well, it's gotten better. KTIV's First Alert Chief Meteorologist Rodna Mars takes a look back at some of the biggest changes. Well, the technology we used back in the 80s was really rudimentary compared to what you have now. If you were in Siouxland in the 1980s, you probably remember the Siouxland. weatherman that I grew up watching. Mike Wonkum. But doing the weather then was very different than now in Boston where he worked. New Center 4 at 6. I mean, you have to remember, when I was doing 1980s, we did three-day forecasts. The extended forecast has a slight chance of some thunderstorms in there. Anything beyond three days we called fantasy land. You just didn't forecast that. Jane Sewell may be another name you've heard of from decades past. She did the weather at KTIV back in the 70s. The winds were influenced by high pressure, which gave us the winds from a northerly direction. They didn't consider weather that important at that time. <laughs> Nowadays, it's much more important and much more valuable because of the data that you guys have. But that data in the earlier days came a very different way than it does now. You know, you have to remember, we didn't have internet, so you didn't get any information until you went to the station, and then you were able to start looking at the maps, and the maps were these paper maps that came out wet, you let them dry out, and then you could study the weather. And the detail that we had available to those was really, really limited at that time. We just didn't really have the detail available to us. And most days included a phone call to National Weather Service meteorologists. You would call the National Weather Service, and they were out at the airport at that time, and you would say, okay, what does the map look like today? They could tell me when and they thought of a cold front would be through Norfolk or Wayne, Nebraska. I would have this piece of cardboard with plastic over the top of it, and I would take a marker. They would say, okay, the cold front goes from Beacon Hill out to the Four Corners, and I would draw this map on a little piece of paper. And then I would take that, and I would go out in the studio, and I would paint it onto this big map. It was a big United States map that was, what, six feet tall and 12 feet wide? I don't know. And then what they did was um, they designed little sunshines that I would... Uh, that were magnetic and stuck to the uh, metal. That's right, magnets helped tell the weather story back then. These cold fronts, warm fronts, suns and clouds, well, they'd all go onto a magnetic weather map. Imagine going back in time. They probably thought that was pretty forward-thinking stuff, and it was, but times have changed. What are some of the biggest changes? Satellites, we would get maybe one or two a day. Now you're getting a, a satellite picture every 10 or 15 minutes coming in. And then I brought the first computers onto the air back in somewhere in the mid-1980s. And when we did that, that was just like a technological breakthrough. But we could only show eight colors. That's all the computers would generate at that time. Now you can generate millions of colors with them. And of course, the thing everyone wanted to have was radar. Using Doppler 4 radar. KTIV. Channel 4 in Sioux City, Iowa had a radar. <laughs> The first radar at Channel 4 was actually out of an old B-25 bomber from World War II. Sadly, uh, you just couldn't show it on, on TV. And it had a big sign on it that said, do not use during severe weather. And while weather technology has come a long ways in the past 70 years, Jane knows there's more to come in the world of TV weather and we'll all be along for the ride. You keep rolling and keep moving uh, the, the Siouxland area ahead in this world. Well, we have come from huge computers and printouts to having the power of the First Alert weather team literally in the palm of your hand. Yeah, make sure you've got the KTIV First Alert weather app on your smartphone to get weather alerts, radar, and forecast from wherever you are in the United States. Still to come, how technology has changed in the last 70 years at KTIV, from vacuum tubes to microchips to servers and virtual machines. And it hasn't always been wine and roses. A look back at some of the things that didn't go quite right. That's later, as 70 years of KTIV continues. Hi, I'm Storm Team 5 meteorologist Mike Wonkum, forecasting the weather nightly here at WCVB News Center 5 in Boston. But you might remember me when I was forecasting at KTIV from 1980 to 1990. I've been tracking nor'easters, hurricanes, and severe storms in Boston now for 31 years. The one thing I'll always remember about working at KTIV is the station is located high up on Signal Hill. I could watch those powerful thunderstorms move out of Nebraska and South Dakota, cross the Missouri River, and roar through Iowa. I chased many a tornado in the summer and blizzards in the winter. And on more than one occasion, I tracked both tornadoes and snow on the same day. Always exciting weather in Siouxland. I used to do weather in front of real hand-drawn weather maps. Now it's all computer generated. I wish I had some of this equipment back when I was tracking tornadoes all those years ago. 
I get back to the family farm in Merrill several times a year. Great to have some home cooking from mom, catch Ron's weather forecast, and see so many friendly, familiar faces. I still run into people who remember me doing weather in Sioux City, hosting Wednesday's Child, and thousands of school visits to talk about weather and science. Weather forecasting has changed a lot over the years. It's gotten better and more accurate. I've been blessed to work with some of the best in the business here in Boston and in Sioux City. I have some great memories of my time at News 4. Happy anniversary, KTIV. Here's to the first 70 years serving Siouxland. And many more to come. Over the past 70 years, technology has changed a lot. From film cameras to the current age of digital video saved on small SD cards and really everything in between. And KTV's Al Jones has been here on Signal Hill for many of those changes. He takes us down the technology highway from the 50s to today. From this to this in 70 years. The KTIV control room of today bears little resemblance to the original. Back then... RCA come up with a package that will get you on the air, and they called the basic buy, and that's what, that's what we used at our studio setup. They included two uh, black and white uh, cameras, a, uh, a Vidicon film camera, a slide, a slide projector to go into the Vidicon chain, and two black and white film projectors. Today... It has virtually nothing in common with 70 years ago. Brady Driesler has been involved with several technological changes at KTIV in his position with our previous owner and now Gray TV. Right now, uh, we do everything server-based. There's no tape, there's no film. It's all electronic, it's all digital. And, you know, it's a wonderful world. He says technology at KTIV has changed at least 10 times during its 70 years. So I've been here for more than half of those 70 years, 39 years for me. So I've lived through a lot of the changes here at KTIV. And one of those changes is how we shoot and store news. When I started in 1985 here, it was on these bad boys, three quarter inch video tapes. I missed the fun of film, darn, by about nine years. After the three-quarter inch tapes, we uh, went to these super VHS tapes, and from there we went to smaller digital tapes, still tapes, but digital. Eventually we shot in high definition on these tapes. Today we are tapeless, and we shoot our stories on uh, these digital cards, and instead of storing our file stories on tape, it's stored on a computer somewhere. We went uh, full power digital in 2009. Analog got turned off. And then we started to build out high definition control rooms, master control, studio cameras. And that brings us to today where we've added a lot better quality studio cameras, a lot better quality equipment. And the pictures you see on KTIV are just amazing. And this is the nerve center of it all, where directors who used to punch buttons don't anymore. Everything is digital. In other words, it's virtual. Um, and it's um, where the the director will actually put codes in a rundown, and that code tells the computer what to do. The new control room that KTIV just put online last fall um, is uh, one of the most technologically advanced control rooms there is in the United States. It, uh, it has the latest in automation, the latest in video equipment, and the viewer benefits from that because we can do news a lot more easily, uh, a lot more frequently, better graphics, better looking everything. For the viewer, it means more consistency. I think it means a better product. I think it means um, a higher standard. 70 years of changes, 70 years of growth. Who knows what lies ahead in the next 70 years. And that technology just keeps moving forward. Today, you don't even have to have an antenna to catch our newscast. That's right. You can catch them live in the palm of your hand or with your smart TV in your living room or wherever you happen to be across the country. News 4 Now is our free app that's available on your smart TV. There you can catch previous news stories live and previous newscasts. Check out our digital weather channel or watch programs that are just available on News 4 Now. If you're more mobile, make sure you have the KTIV News 4 app on your smartphone. There you can watch our newscasts, get breaking news alerts, and catch up on the news of the day at a time that's convenient for you, all in the palm of your hand.
And Jessica, I can't wait to see all that technology we'll be talking about in just five years from now for our 75th anniversary. Yeah, Matt, there is no telling what's on the horizon and what's in store to help Siouxland get the news they need when and how they want to get it. Still to come, we take a look back at some of the things that didn't go quite right as KTIV's 70th anniversary celebration continues. Hello, I'm Christy Vermullum. You might remember me as a reporter at KTIV from 1993 to 94 and an evening news anchor here at KTIV from 1996 to 2013. Even though I've been away from the newsroom for about 10 years, you might still hear my voice every now and then at the beginning of the newscast. This is KTIV News 4 at 6. One of the things I'll always remember about working at KTIV, the people, of course. The people and communities throughout Siouxland that allowed me the privilege of being able to share their stories on our newscasts um, every night was an incredible honor to have. And the people that I worked with, that I got to work with in the newsroom every single day because they were friends that were more like family. And it is a thrill for me to think that the main three anchors that I shared the desk with all those years, Larry Wentz, Al Jones, and Matt Brain, are still here at KTIV delivering incredible news coverage for Siouxland. One of the things that sticks with me during my time at KTIV is the incredible resiliency of the Siouxland community as well as the generosity. As a reporter, I covered the floods of 93, 98, 2011 along the Missouri River, and I see that flooding today. And the resiliency of communities the, be, the ability to come back and build and build stronger. That strength is what holds us together. It's the glue that is true about our community. And the generosity, friends helping friends, neighbors stepping up, and people and businesses helping people they've never met before because they know that it's a time of need. And I think that speaks a lot about our community. And as a reporter, I got to witness that firsthand and that's actually a gift to be able to, to share those stories. Happy anniversary, KTIV. Here's to the first 70 years and many more to come. Well, things have not always gone as planned over KTIV seven decades. That's what happens when you're doing live television. But back when KTIV first started, everything was live. That includes the commercials. And so that meant, of course, more opportunities, unfortunately, for things to go wrong. KTIV's Larry Wentz takes a look. KTIV's earliest location was in the basement of this building in the 200 block of 10th Street, just a stone's throw from Perry Creek. George Lindblade says the station was constantly visited by creatures that would come out of the creek. During one newscast, anchor David Shoemacher, who later went on to work for CBS and ABC News, stopped mid-sentence. Was something wrong? Yes, something's crawling up my pants leg. <coughs> it was a rat. Lindblade says the problem was quickly taken care of and back on the air went Shoemacher. That wasn't the only quick action taken behind the scenes. And that place had a, a fire during the newscast one night. The curtains caught fire, and the floor crew diligently put it out. The early set included a shot of Sioux City's well-known City Hall clock. Prior to the 6 o'clock news, you'd have to go up and set the hands at 6 o'clock, and then the clock would actually be working, and the hands would move. Then you had the daylight one, then the, the, the dark one, you'd have to slide that one out and put the dark one up. And the many live commercials of the era could pose a challenge. Is there somebody to have to go to Schwartz's uh, grocery store and get some six packs of store's beer to fill in what was kind of misappropriated. One week, a popular chef from Toller Drug Starlight Room was making cream puffs live on the air with host Don Stone. And without benefit of anything to put on his hands, reached in and grabbed his cookie sheet turned around to Stolen, and we can't say the words he said, threw the cookie sheet in the air, turned all around, turned the faucet on, and was mumbling various profanities about the burn in his fingers. And broadcasting live from the sports and vacation show at the auditorium required hauling heavy cameras and a staffer's farm truck. It was full of straw, hay, and dropping some hogs. And we'd load the cameras in, and then when we got it down there, we had to take everything apart and clean it because you couldn't smell, you couldn't get near them. Thank 
thank you for spending this short time with us as we take a look back at the first 70 years of KTIV. We want to thank all of our viewers for putting your trust in KTIV over these many years. It's not something we take lightly and rest assured KTIV will be here for the next 70 years to serve you just as we have for the last seven decades.